Uh, thank you for the introduction. Uh, I'm Prakash Reshta, again, uh, from University of Alabama at Birmingham. And I'm here to present our work entitled The Sounds of the Phones, Denses of Jiri Fourth Second Factor Login Based on Ambient Sound. So this is the uh, outline of my presentation. First, I'll give a brief introduction on the traditional two-factor authentication system and recently proposed an interesting uh, ambient sound-based um, two-factor authentication scheme. It will be followed by a brief background description on our threat model and the implementation of the um, ambient sound-based two-factor authentication scheme. Then I'll give uh, details on our attacks and its analysis, followed by potential mitigation approaches against such attack. And um, finally, I'll conclude my talk. So let's start with the introduction. Uh, in the traditional two-factor authentication, uh, first user provides the username and the password, and then it will generate a one-time pin that will be transmitted or generated on the authentication token, typically a phone device, and user required to copy that one-time code to the authentication terminal. In this authentication scheme, uh, the first factor is the username and the password, and the second factor is the position of the um, authentication token, in this case, the phone, which is verified by, the, uh, by copying the code to the authentication terminal. Uh, this approach uh, added the uh, one more factor, that is the authentication token, which improved the security uh, of the scheme. And um, this approach requires user to interact with the authentication token, which may be tedious. That is, user required to um, open its, take its phone and uh, unlock it, and then copy the code to the authentication token, which may be tedious to the user and may, may impact on the usability and the deployability of this scheme. So in order to improve the usability as well as the deployability of this scheme, uh, recently an interesting approach based on the ambient sound has been proposed, uh, which uh, is termed as the soundproof. And in this scheme, uh, user requires to provide just the username and the password. And after that, it will automatically trigger the audio recording in the authentication token and the authentication terminal. If uh, the audio similarity be between these two recordings are highly similar, then the login attempt will be accepted. And further, this approach doesn't require any user interaction with the authentication terminal. So as compared to the previous traditional authentication scheme, uh, this scheme is more usable and more uh, deployable, as it doesn't require any changes on the browser or any um, browser plugin installation. And the main security goal of this soundproof scheme is to defeat a remote attacker who uh, resides in the different place as that, that of the victim. And given the uh, popularity of the remote web attacker, uh, we believe that this goal is a valid goal of this scheme. And this scheme assumes that uh, the attacker cannot guess the victim's environment and cannot be in the similar environment as that of the victim. And with the uh, improved usability and the deployability of this scheme, as I mentioned earlier, uh, it motivates us to uh, do a security analysis of this scheme. And we found a flaw in this scheme that is, and that flaw we have uh, shared with the original author of the soundproof and they have acknowledged it and uh, provided a pass to uh, fix this thread. And in our attack, uh, attacker doesn't need to predict the environment near the phone. Rather, he can force or make the phone to create some predictable sounds or some um, pre previously known sounds. For example, attacker can uh, just call the victim. That will create some buzzing sound on the phone. And at the same time, attacker tries to uh, create the similar kind of sound in, at its end such that the browser recording at the attacker end and the, uh, the phone recording at the victim ends uh, will probably become highly similar. And in that case, the scheme will uh, incorrectly accept the Ill Ill illegitimate uh, login attempt. So in this work, uh, we have made the following contribution first. Uh, we presented a noble attack against a notable and interesting approach based on the ambient sound. Second, uh, we have evaluated our attack system against uh, the correlation algorithm that has presented in the soundproof. Third is uh, 
we have performed a survey study to determine the phone usage pattern and the habits of the user and use those statistics to uh, devise uh, attack strategy so that it can compromise a large number of user accounts. So uh, let's get some background on the threat model and the soundproof implementation. In our threat model, we assume that the attacker knows uh, the victim credentials, that means the username and the password from the lake database. And uh, he we also assume that he hasn't compromised the phone device. If the attacker has already compromised the authentication token, that is the phone, then the security of the two authentication factor will already been re uh, reduced to the uh, security of the password-only authentication scheme. And third, we assume that attacker is not co-located with the victim. That is, we assume the remote atta attacker. So this threat model is in line with that of the uh, soundproof. And uh, in order to launch our attack, we further assume that uh, the attacker knows the user's phone number, email, and other personal information. This information are usually stored on the uh, password database in order for the server to recover the, um, the user credential in case the user forget the, uh, his credential. So in the soundproof architecture, it has three core components. First one is the browser application that uh, has the login form and recording capability. Second is the web server, which is the point of communication between the browser application and the phone application. And third one is the phone application that will uh, start recording as soon as it gets triggered from the uh, browser application through the web server. Uh, Soundproof uh, implement a correlation algorithm that uses uh, one third oct octave band that divides the audio recorded from the browser and the phone into uh, 20 different bands, which has a frequency ranging from 20 50 hertz to uh, 4 kilohertz. And after dividing the audio into uh, 20 different bands, it computes uh, maximum cross correlation between each band from the browser recording and the phone recording. And at the end, it will compute the average of the correlation score um, among the 20 uh, maximum correlation score. Now, let's see the details on the tax and its analysis. Uh, for our attack, the first step is to um, obtain the user's credential from the lake database. After getting the user credential, uh, the attacker will provide the user credentials on the browser application uh, on the behalf of the user. And then it will trigger the recording on the authentication terminal at the attacker side as well as in the victim side. Then next step is uh, he does the two things. First one is at the same time he tries to call or send the message to the victim phone. And second is he try to create the similar kind of sound that will be generated due to the call or message sending at its end. So as that, uh, sorry. And then uh, the browser recording will be transmitted to the phone. The phone will compute the similarity score. And based on this similarity score of the browser recording and the phone recording, uh, the phone will decide whether to accept or reject the uh, login attempt made by the attacker. As uh, attacker tries to uh, create a similar type of sound as that uh, of the phone that creates when it gets calls, so attacker has the high possibility that he gets success to log in on the behalf of the user. So based on this um, attack strategy, attacker can launch the different types of attacks using the different calling or messaging application. So we have categorized two types of attack. First one is ringtone attack and second is app notification attack. In the ringtone attack, attacker uh, uses various calling application, such as the phone call, Viber, WhatsApp, Facebook, Skype, and the FaceTime in order to call the victim. And in the app notification attack, attacker sends the message uh, using the various messaging application, for example, Skype, WhatsApp, Viber. And in order to e evaluate our attack, against the, our implementation of soundproof, uh, we collected different um, audio, 
We collected 525 audio samples from different locations, for example, our lab, office, home, uh, cafe, and library. And with the analysis on these data samples, we set the correlation threshold at 0 0.15, 0 0.18, and 0 0.20. So we have uh, evaluated our attacks uh, against this thresh correlation threshold to see that with the increase in the correlation threshold, what would be the impact on our uh, attack. So this table shows the uh, success rate of the different types of attacks uh, against the correlation algorithm that has been implemented in the soundproof. And from this table, we can see that most of our attacks were highly successful. Uh, the text with the, the numbers with the blue color uh, are the attacks which has a success rate more than 90%. So even with the increase in the correlation threshold, we, uh, we were fairly uh, successful on the attack. So uh, here I would also like to note that these are the success rate based on the correlation score only. So in order to uh, devise a, in order to launch a real world attack, um, and the strategy for that, uh, we perform a user study uh, by recruiting a 113 Amazon mechanical talk worker and found that the two most popular brands, uh, phone brands were iPhone and the Samsung, which is uh, kind of intuitive because most of the users either prefer the iPhone or the Samsung. And in the study, we also uh, queried different types of ringtone that uh, user prefer to use on their phone uh, in the different scenarios. For example, while they are at work or what kind of um, ringtone they prefer while they are home or asleep. So this graph shows the uh, result of our survey study. From this graph, we can see that most of the user, uh, while they are at work, prefer to keep their phone uh, in the vibration mode while most of the Apple user at home prefer to keep their phone either in the vibration mode or in the default mode. And most of the Samsung user prefer to keep their uh, phone either in a default mode or customized ringtone mode while they are at home. So these are the uh, priority that the user will keep their phone in the different uh, scenarios that we'll use uh, during our real world attack. So with this survey result, uh, this helped us to devise a real-world attack strategy which uh, consists of multiple rounds, and each round consists of a particular type of attacks. And a uh, compromised user account at each round can be uh, computed using this equation. Here, uh, the first parameter, C and I, represent the fraction of compromised user account at ith round. And the second, uh, the parameter device, it represents the priority of a user owning a specific type of device, whether it is a Samsung, iPhone, or Nokia, or other uh, smartphone. Third parameter represents the state, uh, the priority of the phone being in that particular state. That may be, um, for example, it may be in the ringer mode, or the vibration mode, or in a customized ringtone mode. And fourth parameter represents the iterative success rate. Here, we assume that at each round, user can try a multiple uh, login attempts. In, um, in a general authentication scheme, uh, most of the general authentication scheme allow the user to, uh, to try for the multiple uh, uh, login attempts. So here we assume uh, at least three attempts is given to the user. So here uh, we, we assign k equals to three. And last parameter is the uncompromised user account from the previous round. So in, the, in every round, we only consider the uh, user accounts that hasn't been compromised in the previous round. So with this strategy, we have chosen a subset of different types of attack and launched them in a particular order. But uh, another attacker can choose a different uh, subset of uh, attacks and launch them in a different order based on the uh, phone users pattern and the uh, target population. So in our attack strategy, uh, we first launched the vibration at work attack. And in this attack, in this round, uh, we consider all the devices or all the users. So the device um, value is 100%, while uh, the state of the device or the phone being in the vibration is 57%. These two parameter device and the state, we got this value from uh, our user study. 
and the third parameter x is the attack success rate that we got from only the uh, the analysis from uh, the correlation score only and another another parameter is the not the parameter then we computed the iterative success rate which we got 99.69% for this particular type of attack then uh, the overall overall compromise uh, fraction of compromise user in this round uh, we got is 56.82% and in total uh, as we have only one first round the total compromise user account from this round is 56.82% in the next round we launched the uh, iPhone call at work attack. In this attack, the, um, the probability of user owning that particular device, that is iPhone is 37, 39%. And instead of being the iPhone in ringer mode, default ringer mode is 16%. These two value are, again, we got it from uh, our user study. Then the attack success rate with iPhone call attack is 99 point, sorry, 81.80%. And iterative success rate is 99.40%. And in this round, uh, we consider only the user account that hasn't been compromised in the previous round. That is uh, the f around 44% of the user. And the total uh, compromised user from this round, uh, we got is 59.50%. So in the similar pattern, we launched the various attacks like uh, Samsung call at, at work attack, vibration at night attack, iPhone call at night attack, and Samsung call at night attack. So in this pattern, starting with the vibration at work in the morning till the uh, night uh, with the Samsung call, we are able to compromise 78.18% of the users, which is a very high success rate in, our, in this case. So with this high success rate, it demands for the uh, mitigation strategy that uh, should be implemented in such schemes. One approach uh, may be to disable the two-factor authentication scheme during the call or notification. But um, this approach may reduce the usability of the scheme because uh, during the call or notification, user won't be able to uh, log in. And next approach may be uh, to use, uh, to frequently change the ringtone. Uh, however, in our study, we found that most of the user prefer to uh, keep their phone in default mode rather than changing it frequently. And in our analysis of the audio recordings, uh, we also found that uh, the presence of the vibration in the audio sounds um, lower the correlation score between the uh, recording. So mixing the ringer with the vibration uh, may also uh, reduce the, um, the probability of our attack success. And as I mentioned earlier that we have shared uh, this thread with the original author of the soundproof, and uh, they have already implemented some of the patches to fix this, um, this flaw. And they may have uh, uh, implemented, uh, implemented the following two uh, uh, defenses. The first one is blocking the sound creation during the recording. However, uh, it, however this approach may uh, prevent the user from getting the call or notification. And second one is detection of device emitted audio during the recording. So, um, and after detecting the device emitted audio, either um, they filter out the device emitted audio or just discard the login attempt. And coming to the discussion and conclusion, uh, there are other several security applications that are based on the ambient sound, for example, co present detection systems and uh, device pairing schemes. Uh, these schemes may also be vulnerable to our attack, um, but uh, in order to launch the attack against uh, such scheme, it requires changes on the threat model. That is, um, attackers, uh, attackers need to know the phone number, or email address, or the other personal information about the user. Uh, finally, in the conclusion, uh, ambient sound-based zero effort two-factor authentication scheme is very attractive and um, it's interesting approach. Uh, however, we so that it is successful to our attack, remote attack, that um, with a high success rate, and it demands the uh, implementation of mitigation strategy, which shouldn't compromise the usability of the system. So that's all about our work. Uh, thank you. Thank you, speaker. So we have time for questions.
Luke Vesitel, North Carolina State University. Mm -hmm. uh, I could have misunderstood something about the way soundproof works, but could I um, match your ambient sound by trying to get into your account very late at night, maybe 4 a.m., where I expect that you will be in a quiet room, and I'm also in a quiet room, and, and I just match that way? You mean uh, the attacker and the victims um, being in the same location? Not the same location. Uh -huh. The victim is sleeping in a quiet bedroom, as okay. most people would at 4 a.m., mm -hmm. and so the attacker just attacks from his bedroom where the sound ah, will be okay. similar. I understand. Okay. Uh, so in our threat model, or in the soundproof threat model, it assumes that the attacker um, like, uh, kind of cannot predict the environment that the uh, victim is in. So uh, basically, if you, are a, if you can create the similar environment that the victim is in, then you probably will uh, get logged in with the soundproof system. Yeah. Um, and if there's no one else on.